This has been a long year. A year of uncertainty, struggle, pain. We've watched a virus take countless lives. People we knew, people we loved. Jobs have been lost. Businesses have shut down. And churches have been forced to close their doors. We've witnessed division on an unprecedented level. Cities filled with violence. Streets filled with protesters. And we felt the sting of racism. The deep heartache of hate. There have been times where it's been difficult to see the hand of God. But even in the darkest of moments, He has been there. Faithful. Present powerful. As a new year begins, we stand on a simple truth. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings as eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not grow faint. We don't know what this new year will hold, but we know that it's held by a God whose mercies are new every morning. This is where we place our trust. This is the truth on which we stand. This is our hope for the new year. Well, good morning as we gather here this morning to worship, to celebrate our God, our Savior, and our King. We gather here because our God is the God who is with us, always with us, always loving us in His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we gather here this morning, just a few quick reminders. One, a reminder that next Sunday is a communion Sunday, so if you're gathered in person, we'll have communion. You can sign up, let us know how many folks will be communing with you. And then if you're joining us for live stream, we'd encourage you and invite you to come through our drive through communion time. We've got a short order of worship, and we take the sacrament that's offered here in worship and bring that out, and we have a short time of prayer and worship together, and we can offer you God's gift in the sacrament. Also a reminder that today we began our Sunday school again, we kick that off again, and we kick off our confirmation classes again. Both of those are on Zoom. The Sunday school is from 9.15 to roughly 9.45-ish. And even if you haven't joined the Sunday school group for the last number of weeks in the latter half of 2020, you can sure join us at this time. And just, again, a chance to connect and focus on the hope, the love, and joy that we have in Jesus Christ. Confirmation class is the same. We've been looking at the Bible and how do we study the Bible, how does the Bible become part of our lives. And even if you haven't joined us or you're sporadic in attendance from this past half of the year, joining us in the new year, just let us, you know, join us in Zoom and connect with us and we'll connect and grow together. And that really is what we've been focusing on during this time, this unusual time that we've been in, of communicating, connecting, and caring for one another as we care for one another in Jesus Christ. Well, as we gather here, for those of you here in person, you can kind of stand up, turn around, shake some hands, you know, say hello to those joining us on live stream. Same thing, little virtual hellos. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, there is a time for everything, and now is the time to go to war against the pandemic. We now have the weapons of a vaccine and a new drugs to help those that are infected with the virus. We now have a country divided, so now we need a time to bring healing to our nation. We now have a time to bring grace to one another as we bring a new year in with great expectations of what is to come. Lord Jesus, 
Thank you for your amazing love and grace you bring to us. So let our songs of praise show our love for you. We pray this in your marvelous name. Amen. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up a time to keep and a time to throw away, 
a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. As we gather here this morning, we're going to begin a new three-week series called I'll Do It Tomorrow, exploring the difficulties and the challenges of change in our lives. As we do that, let's kind of prod you with a question here. And here's your question. What is your favorite season? What is your favorite season? Is it winter like we're in now? Maybe it's spring, summer, fall. What is your favorite season? I mean, maybe your favorite season is spring because you love, you know, the, the warmer temperatures, the rain that comes early in spring, and the beautiful blossoms and flowers, and, and everything just kind of comes to life, especially here in the Midwest where sometimes it can get kind of grungy and gray and dirty, and spring just really comes to life. But you know, even in the desert where I grew up in Phoenix, you know, spring comes to life. The desert blossoms. That's why a lot of times snowbirds will stick around to about, like, end of March, first part of April. Is because they love to see the desert blossom, and then they skedaddle before summer comes. Because, you know, in the summer, it's what? It's hot. I love the heat. Maybe it's because I grew up in the desert that I love the heat, but I love that summer it's warm and sometimes hot. But, you know, you go swimming, you know, and you can go swimming when the sun is outside. You can go to the beach. You know, you can relax. There's a lot of outdoor activities that are a lot easier to do in the summertime. You know, I love the summer activities like picnics and cookouts, all that fun kind of stuff. Maybe your, your favorite time of the year, that favorite season, is fall or autumn. You know, things, again, from the summer begin to cool down just a little bit. Of course, sometimes you've got seasonal allergies. It can be a terrible time of year. The first freeze happens. But that's when you start to gather around a fire outside. Not too cold, not too hot. You know, maybe roast some marshmallows or hot dogs. You know, enjoy the cooler temperatures. For Nebraska, that's football weather. You know, that maybe that's one of our favorite times of the year. You know, my least favorite time, and maybe it's yours, so sorry if it's yours, but you know, but my least favorite time is winter. One, one word, one reason why, cold. It's cold. I mean, I like wearing sweaters. I love, you know, that we celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ in winter. I love that, you know, we get to have some warm drinks like hot cocoa, and maybe we're not gathered outside, but we're gathered in front of a fireplace, and it's toasty, warm, and cozy. But it's cold. Yeah, there's no mosquitoes, but it's cold, you know. <laughs> but, you know, no matter what time of the year that you like, what season you like or season you dislike or at least like the least, one thing is constant. That season is going to change into the next season. So winter will not always be here. Eventually spring will come, and then summer, and then fall, and then spring. So winter, I'm sorry, I get my seasons mixed up. And then, you know, spring, and then summer, and then fall, and it goes on and on, this cycle of change. And that's one thing that seems rather consistent in life, isn't it? Change is one constant in life. And that's really what we hear about from Ecclesiastes 3. Let's read verse 1 together. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time for everything. Now, Ecclesiastes is kind of a big word. I don't know if you know what that word means. It comes from a Greek word. It means preacher or teacher. So Solomon, writing these words here as a preacher or a teacher, offering these words of wisdom. Words of wisdom to help guide and, and shape our lives, help us understand this world that we live in, this life that we live. And as we hear these words, these familiar words of Ecclesiastes 3, you know, that's what we sense. Change is one of the constants in life. This passage teaches us that there is a time for everything. There, there are moments when we are sad, you know, because our football team didn't win the game. Or times we're happy because maybe they actually won the game or at least played well. And there are times that we are angry and we sense that right now, a lot of us, you know, within our families and with our close friends, and, and even in our nation, we have this sense of anger and frustration. And there are times that we are just joyful. I mean, our team won the Super Bowl. We're excited. You know, we're joyful because finally, you know, it's that moment that we, we joy and we celebrate moments of, of like, you know, a couple getting married or, or a baby being born. 
had two, a niece and a nephew being, or nephew and a nephew being born today in our family just the last couple of days. There's also times that we cry, that we are mourning, a sense of, of loss and, and despair. And, and a lot of us have that. Maybe you've had those moments throughout this last almost 12 months now. Oh my goodness, it's been almost 12 months that we've been wrestling with this pandemic. And that, that maybe a lot of us have just had this sense of mourning. When you lose someone that you love, when you lose something in life, when there's transitions in life, we have those times that we mourn. But we also have the times that we celebrate. The times of great joy, times that we have a big party, especially like, you know, when finally, you know, a couple of months down the road here, maybe more than a couple of months, we finally can get rid of those masks. I don't know that anybody's enjoying wearing those masks, but we all wear them and, you know, do our best to wash our hands and all that. But finally, when it's all done, we're going to celebrate, aren't we? Yeah, hopefully online you're going, yes, 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 yes. I mean, we've talked about that as staff. When this is finally all done and we can kind of really gather like more normal together again, how are we going to celebrate being together as God's people and being God's people who celebrate God's presence with us and God's faithfulness and love with us? Life is a combination of contrasting seasons. Again, those moments where we shed tears and those moments where we celebrate, those moments that we have deep sorrow, and those moments that we have laughter in our lives. And as we read Ecclesiastes 3, you know, we really capture this sense of this constant change in life. But even in, in our, our culture, we, we capture this in music. We'll kind of see if some of you are dated a little bit by a piece of music, but this is a fairly well-known piece of music. It came out December 6, 1965, the second album of this folk band that became really a call against for peace and a call for you know, hope in a nation and a world that was distraught by war. A song that took the words of Ecclesiastes 3 from the group The Birds. Do you know that song? Turn, turn, turn. I won't sing it for you, and we can't play it for you because it's copyrighted. You know, but every reason there's turn, turn, turn. There's a season, turn, turn, turn. It, it has that sense of a, a bit of despair, a bit of uncertainty, you know, that sh life is always changing. There's always those moments of contrast in our lives. A few years later, in January 1971, a song called Change by David Bowie. And, and David Bowie even has in his song these words, Time can change me. But I can't trace time. Time can change me, but I can't trace time. And, and what he's saying is time is the one thing that human beings can't produce or increase. I mean, we might try to be better at scheduling our days. We might download apps, you know, that help us shave off a few moments here and there. But, you know, how many days, you know, do we have in a week? Seven. You can't add any more days. We get 24 hours in a day. We can't do anything to add more. We might be more efficient, but we can't do anything to add more to that time. In fact, you know, as we think about that, our inability to really control time, sometimes that is disheartening and unsettling for us as humans. And perhaps one of the biggest interruptions of time is especially unsettling, and that's death. The fragility of life, life is fragile whether it's a pandemic, whether it's someone who's lived a long, long life and breathed their last breath, or whether it's someone who died tragically young. Death has a way of unsettling us and reminding us of the fragileness of the fragility of life. A time to be born and a time to die. Shaquille O'Neal's teammate, Kobe Bryant, who died in a helicopter crash, you know, got the shack thinking. And he spoke about this in his life as he was reflecting on Kobe's death. He said, it makes me think that in life, sometimes instead of holding back certain things, we should just do. We take stuff for granted. See, again, those moments, especially those challenging moments, but even sometimes those celebrative moments can stop and make us think. And these are the issues that Solomon is dealing with us right here. Again, some of those issues are big issues when things just fall apart and don't work. Sometimes they're just kind of funny that you laugh at, at least a couple days later, like when I turned on my stove 
and sparks went flying everywhere. And I thought, here goes another appliance to begin the new year. I lost two appliances last, no, three last year. Now I'll start off with the oven. It's the time for everything. But Solomon deals with these issues, and he helps us to deal with these issues. And it's easy for us to read these words, or like if you listen to the song the, from the birds, Turn, Turn, to have this sense of maybe despair and hopelessness. Because we can't really control things as much as we want. For some of us, we really want to control those things. But we really can't control them. But really, Solomon is telling us something more than that just that there's life and there's death. There's a beginning and an end. He's telling us that our time, your time, my time, is in God's hand. Our lives are not in the hands of fate, but in the hands of our creator God, a redeeming God. Let's read Ecclesiastes 3.11 together. It is a beautiful how God has done everything at the right time. He's put a sense of eternity in people's minds. Yet mortals still can't grasp what God is doing from the beginning to the end of time. And what Solomon is getting at here is, again, that even though you know, we can't fully understand time, even though we may try to control time and control the beginning and the ending of things and make everything good and nothing bad, Ultimately, we live in this time of a beginning and an end. But our God, who lives outside of time, our God, who's beyond time, sees all and works all of this, as we hear in Scripture, for the benefit of those, for the molding and shaping of those whom he loves. But also, too, we were reminded, because it wasn't that long ago we celebrated the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, that at the right time, the God who's beyond all time, the God who is eternal, steps in to our temporal world so that he could live for us, so that he could die for us. He could shed his blood, his body broken for us, that he breathed his last breath so that in time he was born and he died, so that in three days he rose again, so that we know that no matter what we are encountering right now, we have a God who is with us. A God who loves us. A God who is faithful, present, and powerful. See, the one consistent that we have, the one consistent that we have in life, it's not that life changes, though life does always change. The one constant we have in our lives is God. God is your one constant because he will not change. His love for you, his promise to be with you. That is captured off, so we've been talking about music. Let's talk about music some more. I mean, we opened up with two really great songs that talk about God's faithfulness. We talked about God, be thou my vision. That is, that is really a prayer saying, God, remind me that you are always there before me and always there behind me, and you surround me. You are always with me. You were faithful in your presence. But a song written in 1708 by Isaac Watts, paraphrasing Psalm 90. This is a hymn that many of you may know, and it's these words here. Our God, our help in ages past. Our hope for years to come. And the lyrics continue. It says, time like an ever-rolling stream. Time keeps rolling and rolling and going forward. But the one constant, the one constant through it all is our God. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. The risen one who after he suffered, died, and rose again, says to his followers, I am with you always. There is nothing that can separate you from my love. No matter what season you are in right now, this is the one constant, God. The God who is faithful, present, and powerful. So what I encourage you to do, and I've done this a number of times before, is to get sticky notes. I like sticky notes, okay? You know, I should have invested in sticky notes because I love them so much. But, you know, something really simple, you can sticky notes or use some kind of wax pen and write it on your mirror. Somewhere, write this note for yourself. God is my constant. Especially if, if right now it's a difficult season for you. God is my constant. And if you need to write or add extra sticky notes to what that means, you know, look at other scriptures. Read Psalm 90, read Psalm 23, read Romans 8. You know, those things that remind you that God is with you, that God loves you, that he is your one constant. But no matter the season of our lives, God is always there, always faithful, always present, always powerful. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your amazing grace and love. We give you thanks that you are our one constant in your Son, our CB Jesus Christ, who is always faithful, 
always present, always powerful. Lord, as we enter this new year, Lord, it's still a challenging year. And through all the seasons of our lives, we pray that in faith, we latch on, we hold on to you, our present, faithful, powerful, constant Savior and God. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. So as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed this morning, we confess our faith in this constant God. Think about these words as we speak them. It is faith in a God who is constant, faithful, present, and powerful. We profess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we come before God to acknowledge, to confess our sins together as we receive God's grace. We confess, Almighty God in heaven, we confess that we are sinners in a sinful world. It is not just something we do, it is something we are. It is not merely a practice, it is a state of being. Our sins are not just momentary lapses, but they reflect our inner selves. We try to hide our sin in the dark closets of our souls, but in your presence, Lord, they come into the light. So once again, we ask that you forgive us. Judge us not for what we are, but for who we are because of the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us the strength and courage to live and lean into our new identity through our Savior. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We hear God's promise, his constant grace, mercy, and love. Grace is something God gives us freely. We do not deserve it, and we cannot earn it. It is not something that we lose because of what we have thought, or what we have done, or what we have said. God's grace is something God gives us freely in Jesus Christ. Hear his promise to you this day. All of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we continue as we return to the Lord a portion of the gifts and the resources that he's given to us. And this is a response to his gift of love and grace to us in Jesus Christ. In no way are we buying any favor with God. It's a way for us to say, God, thank you. Thank you, and Lord, we want to be a part of sharing this message of hope and love of a God who is constant in grace, in his faithful presence and power. Continue as we return our gifts to the Lord. We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, and enter your email address. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. And if you switch over to the My Profile page, you can update your contact info, link to a bank account, and review your giving history. To get started, visit our website or download the Church Center app in your Android or Apple App Store. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Today, we want to lift up all those that are on our prayer list, as, those, as well as the following people. Chuck, as he recovers from his outpatient surgery this past week. For Connie, as she praises you for the rapid healing of her foot. For Walt and Sheila's son-in-law's upcoming back surgery. For those struggling with cancer, Dan, who has stage four cancer, and Myrna, 
who also has cancer. Taylor, who is struggling and needs your grace, love, and wisdom. Lord Jesus, if it is according to your will, please bring peace, comfort, and healing into their lives. We pray this in your wonderful name. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. Amen. to stay connected in such a disconnected time. Please go to holysavior.org and fill out the connection card. This greatly helps us communicate, connect, and care for the Holy Savior family. Thanks, stay safe, and God bless. Goodbye. Hey again, it's great to worship with you to celebrate a God who is constant, a God who is faithful, present, and powerful in our lives. Whatever season you may be going through right now, know that God is with you, know that God cares for you, and we care for you as well. Would you God wish his blessings on whatever you have before you for the remainder of this day and this week as you go in peace and serve the Lord.